Have you heard the expression, beloved community? You ever heard that expression? It floats around, used in various contexts. It's always intrigued me. It has kind of a, a glow about it for me. And I got curious as to where it came from. So I, I looked it up, and the term first was first used by a philosopher at the beginning of the 20th century. His name was Josiah Royce. And he believed that there's an ideal of beloved community that people can experience, and it's created by certain qualities. One of them is that they're together for a cause. They are together doing something that has purpose. And that purpose, a higher purpose, brings them together. But there are many other qualities that he named of beloved community. To me, a beloved community is one that is collectively experiencing primal spirituality. It's individuals who are coming back to the core of their own creativity, knowing that for themselves, being empowered by that for themselves, and then, then committing themselves to be together in a way that allows the individuals who are participating to give their gifts into a collective endeavor. Could be a project that has very specific physical outcomes. We've got one of those going on here. It's called Sunrise Ranch. <laughs> Hard to miss. Been doing some intensive study and writing on the early days of the Christian church. And I'm looking forward to publishing something under the title, Primal Christianity. One of the ways I define primal spirituality is that it is the initiating spirit and energy and creativity behind all the great faiths of the world. In my study of early Christianity, one of the authors said one of, that one of the factors for the spread of Christianity in the early Christian church was that this was an unusual and remarkable understanding of the origins of human beings, of our primal spirituality. It was an unusual way of naming it. Not that there was some bizarre fight amongst the gods. Not some kind of a battle or some kind of sin, error. But there was this enlightened view of the purpose and reason for a human being. And this enlightened view of who we are, that we are made in the image and likeness of God. And the author was making the point that that was radical in the ancient world. That is not how people saw themselves. That's an empowered view or empowering view of what it means to be a, a human being. To be a co-creator. We're a beloved community with a cause. Bringing the empowerment of co-creation into the world. Teaching that. Teaching people to connect to the empowering spirit within themselves. And then learning to be together as co-creators to do something fabulous in the world.